As a farmer and a leader of a farm organization, I, I really feel there's a crisis approaching. Our job is to feed the world, and uh, now, of course, we have a challenge uh, to provide food security for an ever-growing planet. Climate change affects uh, our production as farmers, and farmers, of course, are going to need to learn two things. One, to adapt to a changing climate, for which we need the help of researchers and, and, um, and governments. And uh, secondly, uh, we, need, uh, we need to learn how to uh, prevent uh, the, uh, the greenhouse gas emission. Good strategies to adapt uh, to climate change also help sequester carbon. It's more efficient to place fertilizer precisely and to apply it only to the extent that the soil needs it. Right now we have over application of, of, of fertilizer in many of the developed uh, countries and uh, it's not efficient to do that, nor is it good for the environment. So a new technology is developing that allows people to place it precisely in the soil where it can do the most good, where it won't be uh, gasified and rise into the atmosphere. That's high-tech precision agriculture. It's good for the environment, it's also good for crop yields. So those two things work hand in hand. We're reducing greenhouse gas emissions, we're improving our yields. Managing your soil so that you allow the most residue to rot into the soil rather than um, plowing it under or, or burning it or getting rid of it in some manner. That natural leftover straw, stover, whatever it is on the, on the ground should be left um, to, to rot into the soil, creating nitrogen and, and leaving uh, more organic matter in the soil, which is sequestering carbon. And that actually uh, helps water retention, keeps water in the soil, which reduces the need for irrigation. So that's a big win-win for the environment, preventing uh, uh, carbon from going into the atmosphere. In fact, it's sequestering carbon from the air into the soil through the photosynthesis that the plants do when they grow. It's been estimated that 70% of the mitigation potential is in developing countries, and that's where yields need to grow too. So we really need to focus intensely on improving uh, yields and improving practices in the developing countries. That's going to take a lot of effort, uh, but it's time to get started.